Hey guys. Hello. Um, oh, we're being live streamed. All right. Let me put my glasses on so I can read better. Ah, there we go. Look oh. at that Barton hoodie though. I like that color too. Is it more mm -hmm. of an 80? I was thinking this would be a good start to a video like that I recorded like Hello, Joe Barton here, diabetes expert, and today I'm going to talk to you about cinnamon. I don't know, and then maybe have something. I'm just, I'm thinking about, you're going to work with me. Guys, this is, I mean, this is Joe taming it down for the webinars. Yeah. He's even more fun and weird and exciting <laughs> outside of the webinars. So yeah. just so you know. This, and you have a daughter that's a nine-year-old daughter that is um, cut from the same cloth as me, I believe. I yeah. It would be fun to get her a personality test and just kind of see where she's at. Yeah. I bet her numbers and stuff would be very similar to you also. Although my numbers are usually pretty close to yours. Yeah. But I right. think, but when I'm in more of like a managing something role, then I'm different. I don't know. It's just how it is. I was I was raised in a different environment. Like I was thinking about this. When I was a kid, I was super introverted, shy. Like I didn't want to go anywhere. My mom was very uh, overprotective, you might say, for good. I mean, she loved me and right. didn't want anything to happen to me. But it took me like till I was in my 20s to really like start to realize like, oh, I actually have more of an outgoing personality and like to explore and be crazy and all that kind of stuff so isn't that yeah. how funny how you find out who you are later in life it's like yeah you no know, I, I always think i should have known this when i was 10 years old and how come how come nobody told me mm -hmm. <laughs> here i am 50 just learning it <laughs> and another fun fact about these two guys that you many of you probably don't know they are so competitive they're so competitive i don't know we have like this group i'm of not I guys. just always win. I just want to win. That's all. And and it's a, it's everything. And we have a real we have a pretty athletic group of men on the Barton publishing team. So like sports or anything that involves pool. <laughs> I mean, any game you can think of is so competitive. I usually just opt to video it because it's so funny. <laughs> <clears throat> we might have to put in some B-roll of uh, us playing shame ball in Utah. This is the um this is a shame ball pool ball that was custom made for me as a gift so that's a whole nother story but it is very competitive and uh yeah it's a lot of fun we have fun as a team so today all right welcome everybody this is the fixed blood sugar webinar i'm joe barton with barton publishing and barton nutrition and we have leslie from the team and dr scott saunders as well and every other week we do a kind of a special topic related to diabetes. And then on the other weeks, we do a type two basics. We talk about um, the diabetes solution kit, which is our flagship product. We've sold over close to 700,000 copies of this um, right now. We're on the, what edition is this? 10th edition. This is the 10th edition of this. We've had this published in the, uh, for over 11 years, I believe. I lose track, but somewhere around there. And uh, we've been helping all sorts of people around the country learn how to reverse type two using um, simple and easy. Well, not always easy, but very simple um, program of programming here. We call it phase one, phase two, and phase three. And if you don't have a copy of this, go get one at bartonwebinar.com. That bartonwebinar.com is kind of the main page that we tell people to visit because it talks about it's well it's, if you're watching this on youtube you can register and join us for free live with dr saunders and get your questions answered which is great and you can if you're with us on zoom just put that in the q a and we'll get to those at the second half of this hour-long webinar um also um, on bartonwebinar.com, you can see our products that we reference. Dr. Saunders has formulated several. Uh, we've got them stacked over here. What do we got here? Oh, that's not that one. Well, we have a turmeric product. That seems to be a good one for anti-inflammation and insulin and blood sugar. Uh, but Cinechroma, this is, uh, Leslie's got the magnesium easy relief. 
Um, Cinechroma is a top seller. We've got a really good one right now. You want to be taking immune support. This says vitamin C, vitamin E, zinc, um, NAC, elderberry, green tea, reishi mushroom, echinacea, and quercetin. Super important uh, for getting over if you got any sickness going on or want to prevent that. Disclaimer time. This is for informational purposes only, this whole webinar. Um, we've talked about that as well. Dr. Saunders is here giving great information, but seems how he doesn't know everyone's personal uh, situation. He can't, you know, this isn't medical advice. So anyways, um, all of that is on hortonwebinar.com. So today is going to be a little bit different. We've talked about heart health in the past mm -hmm. recently, and we're going to continue talking about heart health because Dr. Saunders has found some new um, research that is very interesting and counterintuitive and outside of the norm that we're going to uh, be sharing in our own, we're going to actually be creating, or we have created a healthy heart solution kit, uh, which we've got pretty much ready to go to the printer. <clears throat> uh, and I'm just sharing a little fun insider information. Dr. Saunders basically sent an email and said, stop the presses. <laughs> I found some new found some new information and, you know, wanted to, we're, we're talking about, okay, how are we going to do this? Cause the other report is done and wrapped up and tied with the bow. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy new year. Um, but now we've got more like a supplemental information. That's going to be like a game changer. It's going to go above and beyond uh, what's already out there and for heart health. And a lot of that has to do with um, figuring out, you know, if you have heart issues, like it could be a, any number of different issues and they're all different and they all require different treatments or um, protocols. So that's what we're going to get into today. Um, a reminder, we are also getting your questions answered for type 2 diabetes. We have questions. We've done 120 of these um, recordings in the past and they're on our YouTube channel. If we don't get to your question, we probably have answered it in the past, but um, that's my five minute long intro. Anything I missed, Leslie, before we hand over the reins to Dr. Saunders? I think you got it all. Okay. So Dr. Saunders, what's this new research that you found that, that we're going to be <laughs> adding to what we came up with? Okay. So let me start with a, uh, an in very, very interesting study. And this is from England. Uh, they took 400,000 people over 10 years and put all their information for about 48 different um, risk factors, potential risk factors for heart disease. And, and they fed all this information into a computer that is called AI and artificial intelligence. So it's computer learning model. So the computer is learning and what that means is that they're taking all of the computers, taking all this information instead of just uh, uh, putting it into a graph and spinning it out. It says, uh, it, it, it says, well, every time I see this, I see this. So this goes with this, you know, and it's putting things together. Um, that, that's the, it's, it's actually learning. So uh, they do this with neural networks and uh, artificial intelligence. So, uh, this study, uh, they, they took all these people and they just wanted to see, okay, what does the computer say are the real risk factors for dying from heart disease? What, the, what, is, the, what is the real heart disease risk? And um, so um, it, this is a list in order, this is the, the top 10 list uh, in order of first to last. So the first one was atrial fibrillation. Um, the second one is ethnicity. Uh, and the third one is oral corticosteroid, is oral corticosteroid treatment. Uh, the fourth one is age. Um, the fifth one is serious mental illness. And by serious mental illness, that means um, you require uh, drugs of some kind, usually like schizophrenia not somebody that has uh, uh, occasional anxiety or mild uh, depression. That's the, no, this is serious mental illness. Um, 
And the next is low socioeconomic status. The next is chronic kidney disease. Uh, the next is um, having a normal body mass index is protective. So that was, that was a, number six came out as protects you from, uh, from diabetes or from uh, heart disease. Uh, the, the, uh, the, then smoking came down in number nine and then gender, uh, male, female was number 10. Okay, um, so what, what, what do we note about this? Think about all of the things that you've been told that cause heart disease, right? Well, smoking is number nine on the list. It's below uh, kidney disease and age and serious mental illness and smoking uh, or, and uh, socioeconomic status. Those, those are all higher um, you know, whether, whether you live in a, 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 a neighborhood, low income neighborhood versus a high income neighborhood makes a difference, makes a bigger difference than smoking. Um, and, uh, and then, uh, so smoke, smoking was lower than expected. Blood pressure did not even reach the top 10. In fact, it's way down on the list. Um, obesity didn't make it onto the list. Uh, a normal body mass index is protective, but uh, obesity did not make the list because you got the extremes too, too little weight was a high risk and too much weight was a high risk. Um, but even those uh, didn't make the top 10. Um, uh, the uh, diabetes, we always talk about how your diabetes, you're, you're at high risk for heart disease. Um, and it's not really, it's not, didn't make the top 10. And here's the kicker. Here's the big one. LDL cholesterol came in number 46 out of 48, essentially not even associated with, at all with heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, that's according to the, the computer model who's looking at big um, risk factors. So how do, how do we interpret this? What does this mean? Well, it means we have to go back to the drawing board for heart disease. We have to look at, okay, why does atrial fibrillation give you a higher risk than, uh, of dying from a heart attack than, than anything else? Um, what is it about ethnicity? I mean, when, why is ethnicity important? Well, there's several things associated with ethnicity that you could think of off the top of your head, right? Um, people who, uh, have certain genetic factors that predispose them to heart disease. That would be one. Um, but another one would be lifestyle factors. Um, and the lifestyle factors, different um, ethnic groups have different lifestyle factors. You know, if you look at the blue zones, uh, these uh, areas of the world where people live over 100 years old at a, at a very high rate, uh, what, what, do, what do they find there? Well, uh, they find that uh, mostly connections uh, ha have being integrated with your community uh, was a bigger uh, factor that of, of allowing you to live over 100 uh, than anything else. What you ate wasn't as important. Uh, whether you took supplements was kind of irrelevant. <laughs> um, um, the, the length of life had more to do with connections than anything else. So you can see that you go... Well, ethnicity, yeah, there's a lot of differences among ethnic groups and how they integrate people into the community, how they have a community, whether it's a close-knit community or a spread out community. Um, oral corticosteroid treatment, well, why would that be a big risk factor? Um, well, because you're, why, why are people taking oral corticosteroids? That's cortisone, you know, cortisone, cortisol, um, and why do they do that? Well, they have bad asthma. They have something like arthritis, something that's inflammatory. And it turns out inflammation, there you go. Number three is like inflammation is, uh, is uh, clearly related to heart disease. And several of these could be related. Um, it uh, can be inflammation related. Um, and then uh, and then age, the next one down is age. Why, why is age related? Well, you know, as we get older, we build up more um, atherosclerosis in the arteries and, you know, we're more likely to have a heart attack as we age. Well, wouldn't that be number one? No, it's down to number four. Inflammation is more important than age. Ethnicity 
is more important than age. Um, there was a very interesting study done. Now, this was a long time ago. This was when the Framingham Heart Study first uh, was coming out. They were looking at the possibility of cholesterol causing heart disease. So they fed these rabbits a bunch of cholesterol. They just stuffed them full of cholesterol to see if they, it could build up in their arteries. And sure enough, they could get it to build up in the arteries. Um, but uh, one thing that was really weird is this one group uh, that, was, uh, that was also fed the cholesterol had half as much buildup in their arteries as the other rabbits, that, uh, and this other group of rabbits. So they're looking at all the cause. Well, what's going on here? Why do these rabbits, this group, have much less cholesterol buildup in their arteries, like half as much as the, as the other group? And they look at genetic factors. What litter do they come from? Uh, you know, all these things <coughs> to try and try and discover. You know, lo they looked at their blood tests and looked and do they have anything different? They couldn't find anything except um, they went to the, they found out that the caretaker, the, the lab assistant that was taking care and feeding these rabbits, um, uh, and that was the only thing they had in common. These rabbits were fed by this one caretaker and the other rabbits were fed by other caretakers. So this one caretaker's rabbits had half as much cholesterol as all the others. So you go, wait a minute, well, how does that, how does that work? Well, so they asked her, though they did another study and they, and they watched her do her work. And, you know, are you giving them the, the pills right? Are you doing everything exactly according to our protocol? Yeah, 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 everything according to protocol, except for one thing. Every time she'd feed the rabbits, she'd take them out of their, their uh, pens, their little cages, <clears throat> and she'd hold them and she'd pet them and she just loved them. Uh, and then she'd put them back and, and, they would, and they would eat. And then the next one she'd go and she'd pull it out and she, she just loved the rabbits and she'd pet them and stroke them a little bit and put them back in. Um, and that was the only difference. The ones that got love were the ones that had half as much cholesterol buildup as the other ones, even though they're eating exactly the same thing. So that's where that, you know, ethnicity comes in uh, kind of thing. Um, and then the next one, serious mental illness. What does that have to do with anything? Well, um, people with mental illness, one, they get certain types of drugs that uh, cause heart disease. Um, and that's, that's been well known. Um, and the other thing, they tend to take a lot of drugs. And so people who are taking more drugs tend to have more uh, heart disease and not the other way around. In other words, you're not taking drugs because you have heart disease. You get heart disease because you're taking drugs, at least the ones for uh, mental illness primarily. But also you have to think of, again, the psychological factors. People who have serious mental illness don't connect with people well. And that's one of the issues with having serious mental illness is, is you can't connect with people. Um, so then the low socioeconomic status, people who live in um, less well-to-do countries, uh, their food supply isn't as nutritious as a rule and they tend to smoke more and drink more. Um, so, you know, maybe that's more of a lifestyle factor than anything else. Uh, but again, it could be uh, more of connections. Um, so as we're going through these uh, risk factors that the computer came up with, um, we saw something that's always been known, uh, but is, is not really talked about very much. And that is heart disease is more connected with your, um, your community, uh, how you get involved in the community than it, it, it has to do with what your diet is or how much salt you eat. And salt didn't even show up. In fact, ooh, that was a good one. So the salt turns out that um, low salt diets create more heart disease. They do damage to the arteries. If you don't have enough salt in your blood, sodium in your blood, uh, then you, you damage the lining inside the blood vessels. So, uh, so a low salt diet causes heart disease, the opposite of what we're told. It's a terrible way to lower blood pressure because what it does, it makes you dehydrated and that uh, dehydration uh, causes damage to blood vessels. 
So dehydration is not a good thing. And everybody goes, oh yeah, dehydration is horrible. You should drink more water, drink more water, drink more water. But what we forget about is dehydration. There's three different kinds of dehydration. Low water, not drinking enough water, that's one. Uh, number two is low sodium. If you don't have enough sodium, you can't keep your volume up and you drink all the water you want, you just pee it out. And then the third one is low potassium. And it turns out that's a huge risk factor. So if you're drinking a whole bunch of water and you're not getting enough potassium in your diet, you're depleting more potassium out of your body and you're increasing your risk for heart disease. So drinking water is another thing that can cause heart disease. Uh, everything we were told in medical school, it turns out as, it, as more research comes out, it goes, oh, that was wrong. Well, that was wrong. Oh, the low fat diet, well, that's wrong. Oh, eating five small meals a day with snacks in between so you never have an empty stomach, that's the worst advice you can give to a human being. Um, you know, everything we were taught, uh, not, not everything, but uh, a large portion of what we were taught is wrong, just frankly wrong. And, um, and putting, putting a, a smoking up at, up, at, up at the top of number one, uh, actually, it's number nine. Uh, it's not really, it's not as important. In fact, here's a weird study. The um, people who smoke cigars um, live longer than people who never smoke. If you just take groups of people who smoke cigars versus pe groups of people who never smoke, uh, the ones with the cigars live longer. Why do you think that is? Well, we're back we're to that. Right. Smoking cigars together with their buddies. Yeah. <laughs> we're back to the connection. When, when people smoke cigars, how do they smoke cigars? They sit back, relax. They puff on a cigar. They're not like, like cigarette smokers are like bringing it into their lungs and, and uh, smokers, cigar smokers are more like just puffing for taste more than anything. And yeah, they're breathing in the smoke, but it's not the same as what, you know, cigarettes uh, sucking at the full smoke into their lungs. Um, and, uh, and, but the point is the relaxation response. When you sit back, and smoke a cigar and the world, you shut out the world and you're good. Um, the, the relaxation response is more important, it turns out, than anything else. Mm. Uh, so, um, so and, and, then, and then gender. So all of these things have come up as myths. The cholesterol myth was completely blown open by this study. Uh, the blood pressure myth was completely blown open by the state, low salt diet myth, uh, and then the low fat diet myth. And, and actually, if you look at longevity, the people who live the longest um, are overweight. <laughs> there's, a, there's a J curve in there, where is, as you get thinner, your death rate goes up. And then, and then there's a, a, a bottom line, the lowest death rate, and then the other side goes up. Um, as you get more obese, it goes up, but that, that's a, a J curve. And the, lo the lowest death rate, it turns out is like 25, your BMI of body mass index of 25, which I'm is- live forever. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'll bet you're like 20 or 21. Uh, I don't know about that. How do you figure out BMI? Let's do a little math here. BMI, so oh, it's height a, and weight, right? It's a formula. It's not just height and weight. You, you it's a, uh, it's a height and weight formula yeah. that uh, I, I don't have memorized. Leslie, um, maybe look that up for us and share it in the in the chat once you get it. We'll do a little fun calculation here live on on here. Yeah. Uh, so, well, it's interesting, like very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, you were gonna say something else. No, no, I was going to say I'm going to gain more weight so I can live longer. Yeah, you need to maybe eat a little bit more uh, chocolate chip cookies or something, maybe. Uh, I can help you with that. Darn, that would be horrible. <laughs> well, that's, that's very interesting. So big picture, 30,000 foot view. Do you feel like 20 years from now, there's going to be new information that we find? I mean, it seems like we're constantly getting more data. You talked about this computer that was looking at all this stuff. And so, um, yeah, I mean, are, uh, do you feel like, no, this is it. Like this is, we've got all the data and this is it. 
No, 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 no. Because of course it's more complex than that because um, a heart disease happens from, uh, not from cholesterol building up, but from clots uh, that then, that then are, uh, organize and these clots organize instead of your body healing them and getting rid of them, they, they just organize and they stay <laughs> there. And so that's where the cholesterol builds up on there and then, uh, and then calcium deposits. So there's, there's other things that have to do with uh, building up clots and inflammation. There's more factors, but so your, your question of what are we going to find in the future? Well, you know what? Actually, if you look at the research, this has al always been known, uh, but it's kind of been pushed aside as, oh, that's not very important. You know, the, the salt, for example, it was known that if you don't have enough salt, you damage your arteries. Um, but, uh, but it was kind of pushed aside that maybe, maybe it's better if we lower the blood pressure with salt. Uh, with low with eating less salt. Um, but so they did studies on this. And what they did is they replaced sodium salt with potassium salt in Finland, for example, they've done this many times, but in Finland, they did a huge study, where even if you went to McDonald's, they didn't have any sodium salt, they had the potassium salt. And they had a huge benefit from that. And it turns out that low potassium is a big risk factor, that this intracellular dehydration is huge for, for building up clots and hardening of the arteries and all of that. So that uh, the study in Finland, uh, they, they miss um, uh, interpreted, they misinterpreted the study to say, oh, low sodium is good for you, instead of saying more potassium is good for you. That's really what they should have interpreted it. So, so the research has always been there. This, this Finnish study was done 30 years ago. So nothing, nothing here is new, but it's just like saying, oh, oh, we didn't look at it that way. Um, and, and looking at cholesterol, yeah, cholesterol builds up in the arteries, um, but you have to have inflammation in order that, for that to happen. And um, there's a, a lot of stress factors that are involved. In fact, this uh, number two on the list of uh, the cortisol, uh, the, uh, anyone, or number three on the list of taking oral corticosteroid treatment, um, that just, that, that's, you know, cortisol is the uh, stress hormone. And so uh, the <clears throat> stress hormones, you know, you can't emphasize that enough. So in our report, when we wrote the report, we said, um, dude, you know, you got you to gotta lower stress. And so we talk a lot about that lowering stress. So we knew about this stuff. There wasn't, there isn't anything really new here. It's just kind of been shifted around. And it turns out that how much cholesterol you eat and how much is in your blood is not really the important part. It's really the inflammation. Yeah. I just posted a little survey question in the chat. If you guys want to participate, it's a simple one on a scale of one to 10, how connected to community are you? How connected to community are you? How do you feel? Like, are, are you super plugged in? Are you super isolated? Are you somewhere in the middle? I would say I'm probably a eight or nine myself. So I feel pretty healthy in that regard. Like, that's what you are talking about. It seems like is a really big factor here for heart, heart disease, like whether you're connected or not. And uh, yeah. So yeah, so are, think of, yeah, think, think right. of what the, uh, the um, COVID-19 pandemic has done for heart disease. Mm. Oh, my gosh. How many people are disconnected? Wearing masks or, oh, I can't even hear you. Can't even understand you. Yeah. You know, uh, where, where does that? Yeah. 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 No kidding, man. What a, what a couple of years it's been. Uh, I hope we're turning a corner on that. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't count on it. That's they, they've told us that they're going to, this is not going to go back. That yeah. They're going to keep moving forward and change, change the world. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said uh, that moment you realize that 2022 is 2022. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> we don't want 2020 again. So. All right, we're getting some good answers coming in here for connected community. We got a 10, a five, a nine, um, a very connected, 
Um, at church, eight or nine, but maybe in the neighborhood of two or a three. <clears throat> we got a five. Uh, we got a, my hands and feet are colder than they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a four, a five. Um, used to be very connected, but now about a seven. We got a seven. <clears throat> so let's see. Move to a senior community just for this reason. Um, that's great. Thanks for sharing that, Meg. So my dad is uh, 86 and a half years old and lives alone. My mom passed away seven years ago and uh, he's still maintaining a house. He's got 15 acres. He doesn't maintain the whole acreage, but um, I've been encouraging him or we've been encouraging him to consider a senior community, but he uh, he's kind of a stubborn guy. And so he's like, nah, I'm going to stay here until I die. So but uh, he's very social as well. So I don't know. We're trying to find a good balance for him. He, he, physically, he's doing pretty good. And, uh, but yeah, that connection part is such a extroverted, loves people. And it's like, just go live in a senior living place. You'll love it there. And so I don't know. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Synechroma, our best-selling advanced blood sugar support formula. Now, thousands of people around the world are taking Synechroma every day as part of their program to fix their blood sugar using natural ingredients that simply work. Now, Dr. Saunders formulated Synechroma to meet key nutritional deficiencies that most people have unknowingly suffered from for far too long. With Synechroma, you get a blend of six key ingredients. The perfect combination of chromium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, which it's important to take those two together, selenium, vanadium, and our 10 to 1 cinnamon bark extract. Now, if you're not already using Synechroma, I highly recommend that you give it a try and see how it helps your energy, your weight, and your blood sugar numbers. You can get Synechroma at bartonnutrition.com or on Amazon. If you get it at bartonnutrition.com, you can enter the coupon code webinar25 and you'll save 25% off at bartonnutrition.com. But I realize some people like to go to Amazon as well. So anyways, Cinechroma, highly recommend. Now let's get you back to the fixed blood sugar webinar. Um, before we transition to diabetes questions, I'm assuming we've gotten a few. Yeah, we have. I want to do a quick little giveaway. Christmas gift time. Wait, here we go. What is this? These here are some stickers that I've got. Um, a I got one Nutrition. on my computer. Yeah, a Barton Nutrition sticker and a Cinechroma sticker that my son Cedric designed. I've got a few extras of these I would love to send out to whoever. Okay, the first five people that email Leslie and say, I want a sticker. I'll send you one of each. Send Leslie an email at leslie at bartonpublishing.com. Maybe she can share it in the chat and say, I want a sticker and then give us your address and I will mail out one of each of these stickers to you personally in a handwritten envelope. <laughs> and I will put a fun stamp of my choosing on the envelope. I have a lot. I like stamps. Like stamps are kind of fun. So first five people that send Leslie an email, I'm going to send us a couple stickers too. Okay. Dr. Saunders, we've got some questions coming in. I will start us off at, and then let Leslie take over. So, um, oh yes, James, what was number two and three on the list? And I'm going to add what was number one. I think you said it was atrial fibrillation, AFib. Is that right? That's number one. Yeah, number one is AFib, atrial fibrillation. And what that means is you already have an energy problem with your heart. Atrial fibrillation happens when there's not enough mitochondria functioning in the heart so that it doesn't, uh, the, the muscle, the different muscle cells are not relaxing at the same rate. So they're, they're going all over the place at different rates. Uh, number two is ethnicity. Um, and specifically in England, the, the primary ethnic uh, uh, problem or the, the primary ethnic, the ethnic group that had the most problems with heart disease was the Southeast Asian population. And hmm. uh, 
uh, and that was the that was the biggest ethnic group that had that problem. And then number three was oral corticosteroids. That's uh, people who are taking cortisones of, of any kind, the prednisone or dexamethasone or uh, all, all of these uh, anti-inflammatories. In other words, they've got inflammation going on in their body, which is why they're taking this for mm. asthma or, or arthritis or something like that. They have some kind of itis in their body that requires oral, oral corticosteroids. That's inflammatory. So those are the top three. Very interesting. Well, shameless plug, I mentioned this earlier, but turmeric PP plus, this is our... <laughs> curcumin, turmeric, black pepper uh, formula. That's really good for this. Um, yep. Highly recommend turmeric, so. It is, it's really, it's really good. And the other one is boswellia. Turmeric, turmeric and boswellia are, are probably two of the best. And dang, berberine, every time I run across berberine and I'm looking up for cancer, for heart disease, berberine comes out, oh yeah, it works. It works for diabetes, it works for this, it works for that, it works for almost everything. It's good for inflammation too. Yeah. Yeah. That might be in our next formula here. I, I've, uh, you've recommended that. And I have a friend that's, uh, a formulation guy for a few top, um, companies and he's got like a five times more absorbable or whatever type of berberine. I think it's called DHB or something. So that might be, that might be coming soon, but like, look at us, Dr. Son is recommending products that we don't even sell. So it's like, we're not all about the money. We want to help people, right? So I hope you guys appreciate these webinars. We do it for free for our customers because we want you guys to um, experience your best health. And that's what these are for. So we've been doing these for two and a half years about. And uh, yeah, we love you guys. So let's get to more questions. Leslie. All right, here we go. Uh, questions from Meg. Let's see. Can olive leaf extract help diabetics by killing off the bad bacteria in the gut? Do we protect the good friendly bacteria by only using olive leaf extract periodically? What would be a suitable schedule regimen to use this supplement? Okay. So I think olive leaf extract should be used more sparingly. I think it should be used on an as needed basis. And if you need it, if you have issues so for example, I use it for people that have, um, I've done tests and, and they have some kind of dysbiosis where they have um, uh, bad bacteria growing in their intestines or yeast overgrowth or something like that. Um, then I put them on olive leaf extract for a period of time, usually two weeks to four weeks. Um, and then they're off it because um, you don't wanna suppress the bacteria in your intestines and olive leaf extract is non-specific, and we often think our intestines have have bad bacteria. They're trying to get us, and then there's good bacteria that that are that are helping us. But that's not really the way it works. Really, what happens is um, is is we need a balance of bacteria. And so sometimes, for a lot of people, the the olive leaf will throw off that balance um, by suppressing certain types of bacteria and not others. So um, I, I don't recommend olive leaf extract on a regular basis. I think it should be used if you have a problem, if you need to restore balance and there's, there's too much firmicutes in your, in your uh, intestines, then yeah, take the olive leaf extract. Too much, uh, um, too much candida in your intestines, yeah, take the olive leaf extract. Those are, those are good, um, but not, not on a, a continual basis. Okay. What is the rationale that oil eaten with carbs is bad? I understand the limits need to be in place for both, but is there a biochemistry reason to not combine the two? I usually use an organic omega-3 mayo or avocado mayo on our sandwiches and it's a neutral flavor. Ketchup and mustard do not always apply for our sandwich fillings. Yeah, I know. Okay. Um, so here, here's the deal with, with, if you have type two, and so I'm talking to a population here that has type two. And so if you have type two, um, even if you have type one, the issue is if you have carbs with fat, the fat prevents your muscles, it actually blocks the insulin receptors 
and it prevents you from absorbing the sugar. So you already have this insulin resistance and the fat um, contributes and adds to the insulin resistance to make you more insulin resistant. So what happens when you eat carbs, boom, instead of just a little bump, you get a huge bump and then you release a whole bunch of insulin and then you get insulin resistant and the whole cycle, the snowballs all over again. So there's, there's, um, there's two, there's actually three things you can do. Number one, um, the, the diabetes solution kit, we say just cut your carbs. So you can eat fat, but just cut your carbs. So if you have a little more insulin resistance, well, you're not eating enough carbs to bump it up. So you're not going to get a bunch of insulin and you get the insulin uh, resistance going down. That's, that's okay. Um, uh, the other way is to cut out fats and there's, there's been diabetes research, plenty of it. If you cut out the fats, if you do the zero fat diet, the Dean Ornish diet or McDougal diet, that your diabetes gets better and you're living on carbs. You're eating fruit and vegetables and, uh, and beans and peas and lentils and, uh, all these carbs. And yet your blood sugar is going down. How do you figure that? Well, you're, you're, you're not getting the fat to cause the insulin resistance. So then, then the, uh, the, the muscles bring in the, the fat easily, make glycogen, and then you use it when you exercise. Um, and then the third way to do it is just to split them, to have your to never eat fats with carbohydrates. So if you eat carbohydrates, you know, fine, have an apple. There's no fat in an apple and, you know, have a carrot. There's no fat in a carrot, have a potato. There's no fat in a potato until you double a whole bunch of sour cream on it then, or, or, or butter, you know, put a half a stick of butter on there. Ooh, that makes it good. Um, but that causes the insulin resistance. So uh, that's, the, that, that's the biochemistry of it. All right. <laughs> Roy said, wait, McDonald's diet? I think it was McDougal. I think it was McDougal. <laughs> yeah, it was McDougal. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, let me see. Okay, Roy said, so does loud music have the adverse effect, the adverse effect that we were always told as kids? And the other side of the coin, does calming music help with better mental health? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Okay. So I, I, I haven't done a lot of research on this. Maybe we should do a home cures that work on music. Mm. Um, um, but uh, the, the loud music, uh, it, it turns out you have a, a, um, a muscle that's connected to your, uh, your bones in your ear and they're tiny, tiny bones that you can barely see. Um, they're bones in your ear that move your, um, uh, your membrane and not the tympanic membrane, but the, uh, the inner membrane, um, that there's a, there's a muscle that pulls on it and dampens it when you have loud music going on. So, uh, so, um, but if you have, uh, if you have suddenly loud, like sudden loud noises, like, like a shock or a firecracker or something like that. Um, then there's not enough time for it to dampen it. So you can do damage to the cochlea where, where, the, where the hearing uh, organ in your ear. Um, so that's, that was an interesting study that I saw was uh, during the 1960s when they first started getting um, uh, the um, uh, amplifiers to amplify music to make it really loud, uh, in the old days, before amplifiers, they just had to add another um, violinist to make it louder. And then if they wanted it louder, then they had to add more violinists, you know, to make it louder. Um, and now we have amplifiers, right? So the, so in the 1960s, when they came out with these uh, amplified music and people are like, uh, you know, uh, feeling the music um, from an amplifier, everybody said, oh, you're going to ruin your ears. You're going to damage your ears. Well, it turns out because of that, muscle will dampen it and prevent damage to the cochlea. Um, the people listening to loud music don't lose their hearing, but the people that went to Vietnam um, and they were shooting guns, they did lose their hearing uh, and there was a significant decrease. So, uh, so the, the guns and the firecrackers and the, all that stuff uh, can damage your ear, uh, just like they said. Now, your next part of your question was, um, does does uh, good music, um, well, um, if it does, if you 
feel relaxed and unstressed by listening to uh, quiet, soft music, um, that's fine. Uh, but it, it's your response to it that's more important. Uh, and so they've done a lot of studies on this with children, little babies, and, uh, and, and giving them, having music around. Um, and it does help them. It seems to make a difference in as far as their ability to learn, their ability to do math later on in life, uh, if when they're infants, they have uh, the soft, good music. I don't know. There is, a, I get a lot of ads for the Calm app and they have um, like famous actors and actresses that talk or like help, they'll, they'll talk to you on this app to help put you to sleep and it's very calming or if you have preferences for certain people's voices it's actually very interesting so that it must work for a lot of people it must work um let's see a uh, question from facebook from ramona can af be reversed atrial fibrillation, atrial, atrial fibrillation. um afib uh, can be reversed, um, you have to increase the mitochondria. And there's a book out, it's, uh, the doctor is Stephen Sinatra, MD. He's a cardiologist from New York. And he wrote a book uh, called um, Reverse Heart Disease Now. Um, and it's, it's, it's just specific types of heart disease and, and specific like supplements, nutrients and things you can take to do that. And, and he talks about AFib in there, how, uh, what the best way to reverse it. If you're going to reverse it, this is what you're going to have to do. Okay. Uh, Fred says, what do I need to do for my feet and hands being cold? Glucose for 120 days is 106. A1C three weeks ago was down 6.2, which was down from 7.8 last spring. Wow. Okay. So, so the, que the question was what, what was, the, what do the I need to do for my feet and hands being cold? Oh, okay. Your feet and hands being cold is a different issue. Uh, maybe, um, probably um, I, I, it may not be neuropathy. It could be um, your, your metabolism drops lower. So when, when we're eating a whole bunch of food, um, when we're eating a whole bunch of food, the metabolism goes up. And, uh, and we, we burn more uh, brown fat, we burn more energy in our brown fat and make more um, uh, heat in our body. Um, but when, when we restrict, um, I'm sorry, when we restrict our diet in any way, then, the, uh, then we make less energy in our body, less heat uh, out of our calories. Uh, so, um, because of that, uh, we tend to get cold hands and cold feet when we're on any kind of diet. So you're doing great. Um, it's okay. What do you do about your cold hands and cold feet? Um, dress warmly <laughs> because you're not making as much internal heat. So you have to hold on to it better. Um, and you're going to feel like a, um, a reptile for a little while, a cold blooded creature. Um, and, and, that, and thank you for asking that because other people are probably having that kind of an issue going, dang, why are my hands and feet cold? I know when I, when I fast, I'll, I'll fast for, uh, several days, I'll fast for a week, uh, or more. And, uh, I always have cold hands and cold feet during that time. Or if you live in South Dakota, like I do, <laughs> there's always that. That'll do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Is erythritol good for baking? Um, erythritol is a, um, a sugar alcohol. It's a, a sugar substitute that is um, not absorbed by the body and yet it tastes sweet. Uh, and so it's a, a wonderful substitute. Actually, all the sugar alcohols are However, <laughs> if you eat too much, it can cause diarrhea because it's not absorbed into the body. Um, um, but part of the problem is that the taste of sweet can cause you to release more insulin. So if you have type two, that what, the, what we're dealing with is insulin resistance. It, uh, and, and if that's the issue that you have, then it's just a better idea not to eat uh, things that taste sweet, even like stevia is, uh, you know, completely um, benign. In fact, stevia has been tested on all kinds of things. Even um, it, 
it prevents the growth of yeast. It uh, um, helps, I forgot what it was. There was some infection, the tuberculosis or something that you can use stevia leaf extract for um, viruses. Uh, it's amazing what it does. And yet um, the taste of sweet will still cause people to release insulin and be more insulin resistant. So while you're on phase one, I would recommend don't use erythritol. And then when you're getting into phase two and you're testing to find out what your levels and how you're affected by it, you may find that it doesn't affect you very much and you can use it. Okay, we get a lot of questions about melatonin. Uh, this is a good one. Mary says, will taking melatonin to sleep at night have an effect on lowering your blood sugar? Huh, I don't know. Of, I don't know if it lowers blood sugar. I don't, I don't know of any research on that. Um, I can look it up. Um, melatonin is a, a hormone that we make in our pineal glands in our brain. Um, and that, that's the sleep hormone. And it's it, it, when, when the lights go out, when it's dark, um, then you start making melatonin. And so when the sun goes down, uh, then you start making melatonin and your body goes, oh, it's time to go to sleep. And you go to sleep. Um, the more melatonin you have, the less risk you have of getting Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, and neurologic uh, brain problems, multiple sclerosis, all of those brain issues are decreased by higher levels of melatonin. So turning off all the lights uh, at night so it's darker, you make more melatonin, or if you're taking a supplement, because uh, melatonin is actually made in the intestines too. It's not just made in the brain, uh, so it's, it's, uh, and it's in the food. Um, so melatonin comes from serotonin. So you have tryptophan is made into serotonin, which is made into melatonin. Um, and so it's not just in your brain. And so when you take it, um, it, it turns out it's um, anti-cancer. It is, uh, prevents um, neurological diseases. Uh, so um, yes, melatonin is really good and it, it's good for you. And I haven't yet found uh, too much. You know, I, I'm usually looking for, you know, what's too much vitamin D? What's too much CoQ10? What's too much of cortisol or whatever, whatever uh, people are supplementing? Um, and melatonin, I've found um, some research on uh, people with cancer taking uh, hundreds of milligrams at a time. Uh, and, uh, and that's in the usual doses, like 0.5 milligrams or one or two or three, or the high dose is 10. And these people are taking 10 to 100 times that. And yet, uh, and that's for, to, for decreasing their cancer uh, or getting rid of their cancer. And, uh, and no ill effects from it. They don't sleep more actually, which is funny. Okay. Uh, if your urine has the smell of ammonia, is there a problem? Um, not necessarily. Um, often that smell of ammonia uh, comes from normal processes, but sometimes it comes from bacteria. So if there's bacteria in the urine, it doesn't mean necessarily that you have a urinary tract infection, but normally the, uh, the bladder is clean of bacteria. Um, and so if, it's, if it is ammonia, and uh, then you might have just high levels of urea that, uh, that, that could be the normal process, or you could have bacteria in your bladder um, that are breaking down the urea and making um, ammonia. All right. Uh, Meg says, so if I'm keeping us to the 20 carb limit in the Saunders Barton program uh, or the diabetes solution kit, then can I eat fat with some of my 20 grams of carbs and subsequently not increase or sustain insulin resistance? However, only at this level of carbs, right? Yeah. So um, the, the idea behind the, the way we've structured it is is there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? Uh, who'd want to skin a cat? That's a terrible thing to do. That, uh, there's, there's more than one way to, to fix a problem. Um, and so, and so um, the reason we've, uh, the, the, re the reason we've chosen this is, uh, is because it's something that people can do 
uh, and and sustain for a period of time enough that they can uh, that they can um, uh, uh, get their diabetes resistance down. So, if you have diabetes, if you have insulin resistance, and uh, and you you drop the carbs to less carbohydrates than you can use in a day, then you have to burn something, and then your body will start burning fat. Uh, will use up all your carbohydrates and start burning fat. So even if you're eating fat and you're insulin resistant then uh, it doesn't matter that much because you're not eating enough carbohydrates to, to raise your blood sugar and raise your insulin and cause insulin resistance. So that's the idea behind it. And it works for most people. Now, some of you have come back and said, ah, I've been on your program and I'm not seeing the results I expect. Like everybody else is calling in and saying, wow, I'm doing great and I've dropped my hemoglobin A1C, but it's not working for me. Then, then I tell them, you know what? Try eating more fiber and less fat. Get the fat down and you may find that that, that makes a big difference. Okay, I think we, one more question really fast. This is from William. I'm 67 years old and a CT scan showed plaque in all three cardiac arteries. The calcium score was around 1600. I have never had any chest pain or shortness of breath, even with walking my two whippets six times a day for 20 minutes time and intermittent sprinting as they love it. I started three protocols for removing the plaque, two supplements with K2 Mark seven pomegranate juice daily shown to clear by 30% in a year and an EDTA chelation product product. Should I add more protocols? Wow. No, you know, the, the EDTA product uh, is questionable. There are several studies done on that. Um, the problem is the uh, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, which is a, uh, an amino acid that holds on to calcium and pulls it out. Um, when you take it orally, it, um, it gets um, broken down in the, in the intestines, the stomach and intestines, um, and isn't well absorbed. So they have a, a rectal form and they have a, a, an, an IV form. And I've done the IVs uh, on people and I've seen remarkable results. So I know EDTA works, but uh, I'm not sure the oral form works that well. Um, the vitamin K uh, is great. Um, and then and I think um, there's enough research on the vitamin K. If you just use that, that, that would uh, be adequate. Um, and then what was the other one? And, and K EDTA. What, what was uh, the third one? They were using pomegranate. pomegranate. Oh, the pomegranate. Yeah. Yeah. It really interesting. Uh, pomegranate is uh, primarily um, has, has um, antioxidants in it that uh, lower uh, oxidation potential, um, which works really well. Uh, and uh, I've found though, that when, if you're using the juice, if you're using a natural juice that you're actually uh, getting from pomegranates, it's great. But once it's heated and bottled, uh, I don't find it to work as well. I, I had somebody with Crohn's disease uh, for, um, years, 20 years with Crohn's disease and she's had seven surgeries and uh, we just having a hard time getting it under control until she ate pomegranates and she ate a pomegranate. She goes, oh my gosh, I haven't had any diarrhea. And then she ate another pomegranate and she goes, oh my gosh, I haven't, I, this is working. It's, I've been like six weeks with everything normal uh, since I've been eating pomegranates. Uh, pomegranates are awesome. And then um, the store stopped selling pomegranates. They were out of season. And she's like, I got to get pomegranates. And then so she goes, oh, there's pomegranate juice. So she bought that, those bottles of pomegranate juice and they didn't work at all. She actually had to, uh, she had a lot of diarrhea for a long time until they started selling pomegranates. And then, and then she would uh, freeze them uh, so that she could have them. Uh, and now they, now they sell uh, frozen pomegranate seeds. Um, anyway, so the pomegranate juice, um, yeah, one, once it's heated, I don't know if that's, uh, that's awesome either. Um, but definitely the vitamin K gets the calcium deposits out of the arteries as long as you get rid of the inflammation. And that's where the idea of the pomegranate juice, 
Um, you could also try turmeric and then you could find the source of the inflammation. If it's something like something you're eating that you're reacting to or, um, or if it's the, if it's the inflammation caused by stress from your uh, psychological problems, then that would be something to deal with too. Today's Fixed Blood Sugar webinar is sponsored by Synechroma, our best-selling advanced blood sugar support formula. Now thousands of people around the world are taking Synechroma every day as part of their program to fix their blood sugar using natural ingredients that simply work. Now, Dr. Saunders formulated Synechroma to meet key nutritional deficiencies that most people have unknowingly suffered from for far too long. With Synechroma, you get a blend of six key ingredients. The perfect combination of chromium, vitamin D3, and vitamin K2, which it's important to take those two together, selenium, vanadium, and our 10 to 1 cinnamon bark extract. Now, if you're not already using Synechroma, I highly recommend that you give it a try and see how it helps your energy, your weight, and your blood sugar numbers. You can get Synechroma at bartonnutrition.com or on Amazon. If you get it at bartonnutrition.com, you can enter the coupon code webinar25 and you'll save 25% off at bartonnutrition.com. But I realize some people like to go to Amazon as well. So anyways, Synechroma, highly recommend. Now let's get you back to the Fixed Blood Sugar webinar. Right. Thank you, Dr. Saunders. You're welcome. We know you have a patient to see, so a river chi uh, or whatever the I word think. is, but we'll see you next time. See you next year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah see you next year. I yeah. sent you a text, so get back to me later today if you can on the text about the scheduling future webinars. Okay, deal. Uh, all right. Thank you. Oh. Bye. All right, we'll stay on here. Um, I saw a question come through about Synechroma. Um, has Synechroma the name been changed to blood sugar control. Um, so that you're probably seeing that on uh, Amazon. So Synechroma got taken off of Amazon. It's not available there uh, because they said we claim to make a diabetes claim, which I don't know why they said that about us or picked on us, uh, but we didn't make any diabetes claims. We said something about blood sugar helps support healthy blood sugar. And apparently that's over the line. <laughs> so, but we do have a product that looks the same, um, same branding. It's called blood sugar support, uh, which is funny because the, the name is like in the title of that product and that one's fine, but Synechroma is not. Synechroma is going to be back on Amazon very soon, but the best place to get our supplements is on the Barton Nutrition store. And that, um, I think I forgot to mention the coupon code too. If you want to save 25% off our uh, products, just enter webinar 25 in the promo code section of the store and you'll save 25% off. Um, the blood sugar support product on Amazon is not the exact same formula as Synechroma. So we just have it up there as kind of a, it was a backup product at, uh, when we had run out of Synechroma at the time. So but I, yeah, we don't recommend that one nearly as much. Get the real thing. Get Synechroma. Go to bartonnutrition.com. And uh, yeah, Leslie posted the coupon code there. So yeah, I hope you guys learned a lot today. Lots of good stuff. Dr. Saunders shared some new information, covered a list of the top 10 risk factors of heart disease, which are um, basically blowing up all the other things that we've been taught over the years about heart disease, which doesn't surprise me. Dr. Saunders would find this. And so that's what I love about him. He's always going to tell you the truth of what he finds. He's not out trying to sell as much product as he can or anything like that. <clears throat> um, he formulates supplements to help um, meet nutritional deficiencies. And so that's what our supplements are about. Um, so yeah, good stuff. You can watch our replays on YouTube and bartonwebinar.com links to our YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page you can um, join as well. And we post some things there. That's a place for you guys to have a little bit of community. 
um, online. So speaking of community, that was one of the biggest factors in um, being healthy. And so highly recommend that just be with people you love or go make new friends or um, find people to hang out with and eat those low carb meals with. <laughs> and if you're going to have dessert, like share it with three people instead of eating it all yourself. Right. I mean, that's probably a way you can go a little higher on that carb list and be fine. So you didn't hear that from me though. Um, uh, no, it's all good. So, uh, any other questions, Leslie, you think that we could help answer without the good doc here? I don't believe so. Let's see. Um, Rosalind said she's been without Cinechroma for three weeks, was on a monthly auto ship program. Um, card didn't go through. Please ask them to call people if they have that problem. So, yeah, we don't call people typically if the card doesn't work anymore, but there should be an email notification that goes out. I think we just don't have the manpower to call everybody when that happens. So, um, yeah, sorry about that, but, um, glad to see you got that taken care of. So, and glad to see Cinechroma is working for you, Rosalind. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Leslie, what are you guys doing for new year's? Anything exciting? You know what? We have not even talked about what we're doing. So, <laughs> I know we're kind of we're going through a bunch of changes our kids are going to a new school starting on Monday and we're doing some stuff to our house and so there's never a dull moment here and we're kind of in it we got to take it one day at a time right now so <laughs> that's good advice right there we're kind of the same way except not as much uh change going on in our yeah. our household so my oldest son Anders he's flying home back to Texas tomorrow morning so we're going to spend a little bit of time with him tonight, going to his favorite uh, restaurant, Tokyo. Ooh, a little, uh, hibachi and, uh, and then I think. Yum, yum sauce. Go. Yeah, maybe a little yum, yum sauce, a little ginger. Yes. Good stuff. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think we, a lot of times we'll stay up till 11 p.m. and watch the New York ball drop. And then it's like, all right, time for bed. <laughs> I think one year we actually watched a video from last year or the year before and just showed our kids that YouTube video and it worked out great. Nice. Yay. It's, <laughs> it's time for bed. All right. Yeah. Okay. So I did offer the stickers. Um, I've got the envelopes ready. Whoever wants. I think I'm getting emails. So. Are you? Okay. Yeah. We might still have a couple slots available, but if you want some stickers for your water bottles or your laptop or the back of your car, or maybe on your wall, nightstand, you know. Then take a picture and then take a picture when you do it and post it on our Barton webinar page so we can see it. Yeah, on our Facebook page. Yeah. Or, or in or, that group or wherever you want. Yeah, or email us. Hey or, yeah, that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay, here's the stamps I picked. Johnny Cash, uh, hockey player, Scooby-Doo. Um, Yogi Berra, the old baseball player, and a purple heart. So, nice. boom, they're ready to go. I just need addresses. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. We'll see you guys next week. We are talking about possibly changing the time. So, be on the lookout for that. But as of now, we'll, we'll probably do Thursdays at 11 a.m. Central Time, at least for a little while longer. But uh, to be determined. So, okay. Thanks, Thank Leslie. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Happy Bye. New Year. Bye-bye. Happy New Year.